You can't have talk about the NBA draft without a little pre-draft buzz. The latest report, what is this? Uh, sources told our Mark Stein that the Lakers are actively pursuing trade scenarios to construct a deal that would convince the Kings to give up DeMarcus Cousins in a trade. The Kings are publicly insisting Cousins is not available, but according to Yahoo Sports, Kings coach George Carl has intense desire to trade the All-Star Center with a growing belief that the coach-player relationship is irreparable. What is this, Coach Carl? Not perhaps wanting DeMarcus Cousins. How do you feel about this? Go ahead. Well, that didn't take long. <laughs> George Carl got there. Right. And DeMarcus Cousins, although, by the way, anybody that can tweet emojis using Jay-Z's Blueprint 2 saying when the grass is cut, the yes. snakes are going and to be there. Anybody that can use that, DeMarcus Cousins, you have me. Hello, brother. Let's put it shout down. out. <laughs> he is a perfect fit for any team. This guy last year averaged over 24 points per game, over 12 rebounds, over three assists. And don't give me the whole, well, he's being selfish. He re-upped in Sacramento, signed an extension back in 2013 for four years and $62 million and donated $1 million of that for charities in Sacramento. DeMar DeMarcus Cousins, if that guy is on the market, I know he has trust issues. You know what? Find a way to make that guy trust you and alleviate his concerns because that boy can ball. Give me a guy like that. Um, if I'm the Lakers, if I'm the Clippers, if I'm the Knicks, if I'm a team in China, if that guy's available, <laughs> give me that guy that can bring that kind of production. And I know a guy that's going to play hard pretty much every night. You even the guy, that tweet. You even, reference it. Go ahead. Go ahead. Even the guy that was suspended in 2012 and yet is still in the top 10 of most immature players. You still, that's you. Here, here's cool the deal. You know, I'm not, gonna give, I'm, I'm not ask, giving a pass on that. If the numbers, no. if the numbers out outdo the behavior, cool. But I, I'm not giving him a pass on that. But we don't know the inner workings of that situation in Sacramento. What the dynamic could have been between a coach and a player. I know if I'm Demarcus Cousins and you bring in George Carl, you say he's going to help me, and then all of a sudden he's hell bent on getting rid of you. I'm not trusting anything that you tell me anyway. So it, he does have immaturity issues. I'm not going to bypass that, and nobody should. But if you bring a guy in like that. That and you let him know, you know, you have our trust. And if he feels that, you know, he, if he can do that and not trust people, what is he going to do? Man, if he's going to so, trust um, people. What is, he okay. what, what is Demarcus Cousins trying to say with that tweet? First of all, that we saw with the snake in the grass. Well, for somebody who's from New York, I wish he would tweet another Jay Z line: that "Empire State of Mind." Hey, man. Knicks okay. fan, as a Knicks happy fan, happy okay. with that. I would be as a Knicks fan. I love both George Carl and Demarcus Cousins, but you kind of saw that this could be doomed from the start because they're both guys that let the emotions get the best of them. And look, now look, George Carl, he, he loves offense, right? If he can't make it work with Demarcus. Cousins, Cousins, it's just not going to work out. And I just spoke to a general manager about half an hour ago. He said there definitely is truth to this, that George Carl is looking to trade DeMarcus Cousins. But Vladi Divac now is running the general manager's office up in Sacramento. He does not want to trade DeMarcus Cousins. But you better know people around the league are looking into trying to get DeMarcus Cousins because it appears George Carl and DeMarcus Cousins are already off to a bad start, and that's not going to work out. And what part of this do you feel like Cousins is playing into this? Because the Yahoo report said that he has a firm loyalty to the previous coach of Michael Malone. So how hard-headed do you feel like Cousins might be being in this situation? He's going to get even more hard-headed now with George Carl saying what he's saying coming out and acting like that, that and that goes to your point when you bring a guy in and say look we're gonna bring someone that you know you can count on and trust and that dude does what is apparent like stabbing you in the back now every time you're gonna look at that coach you're gonna be like yeah you ain't got my yeah, best I mean, interest I mean, in there him. already seems to be distrust I mean the, the general manager I talked to said basically George Carl is like if I can't make this guy who is moody and known as a moody player happy with my offense this is just not gonna work out if there's already distrust from the coach and then of course you know what DeMarcus is tweeting out there Absolutely. And it, we're what are we we're in June. You know what so I mean? So, they, so, so like perhaps this, the trade though? talks will heat up on Thursday uh -huh. because usually a guy like DeMarcus Cousins, if he is indeed going to be on the trading block, things are going to heat up Thursday. They're going to heat up in the summertime. So the, the, the Kings should wait, though, to see what they can get for no DeMarcus doubt. Cousins. But I'm sure if I'm Phil Jackson, hey, you, do you guys want that number four pick? If I'm Vlad A. Divac, I'm calling George Carl. Man, be quiet. You don't get to make <laughs> the personnel decisions on this team. But do you like this, though? Because let's talk about the draft aspect of this. If you're the Lakers... I mean, actually, both players, 6'11", 270 pounds. So who do you prefer in this situation? The upside? I mean, obviously, DeMarcus Cousins is not too old. But what would you do in this scenario if you had the GM hat on your head? Uh, yeah. Ooh, if I'm the Lakers, I'd take DeMarcus Cousins Amen. over to Lil Okafor. Yes. I'd definitely take DeMarcus Cousins. I mean, got, yes. the kid is still young. He can score. And say what you want to say about his, how emotional he is, how moody he is. 
<laughs> when he balls out, mm -hmm. he balls out. Mm -hmm. And you think he's going to have maturity issues with Kobe? <laughs> you know, Kobe's Kobe only there for one more yeah, year. I know, oh, but Kobe that's what I'm saying. It. For that one year, Kobe's going to call Kobe that Kobe wants his players to play hard. You know, and that's and you one can't thing question that about yeah. DeMarcus. And that's, the that's, that's where you can change the difference between playing with high emotion and then playing over the edge with high emotion. And I think Kobe would help him differentiate the two. So if you're the Kings, how much do you need? How much do you need to make this thing happen, to convince you to do it happen? Because obviously right now, publicly, they're insisting they're not doing it. Well, apparently they need a psychologist. They get George Carl and DeMarcus Cousins in the room. Or Oprah, room. right. Because I'm a big Ice George Green. Carl fan as a coach, but he, he is very stubborn and bullheaded. That can be a blessing and that can be a curse. Now he's meeting a basketball equivalent. I'm sure Carmelo Anthony is somewhere going, hey, DeMarcus, <laughs> I would do the same thing in Denver. Everybody said that I was the main problem. Oh, <laughs> Carmelo's you know, tweet. I, exactly. I told you so. You know, I, I, I'm right. doing that. You know, right. Gary Payne has even said, yeah, I love George Carl's a coach, but there are plenty of times that we had our situation that he's in the Hall of Fame. NBA coach of the well, Yeah, former NBA coach. Now, he got railroaded out of Denver. I don't know what happened there. Personality conflict, whatever that was. Won a me, lot of games. Got, I was there. He got railroaded out of Denver, but in a situation like this, this didn't take long at all yeah. for George Carl to look at DeMarcus Cousins and say, well, I can't make it work with him, Which and that's going to be the end of that. Disrespecting, I mean, for it to happen so quickly, like what must have happened to make that fissure happen so strongly and so quickly? That's a really good question. I mean, we don't know. When you get human dynamics involved, you may think you can put two people together and it's going to work. And then within two minutes, you say to yourself, well, that's a bad idea right there. So I don't know the inner workings of that. But what I do know is, is what's been put in front of us. And that is apparently a guy that was second team all NBA. It's hard to make an all NBA team where your team stinks. Right. <laughs> this guy was second team all NBA and nobody quit. That guy should have been first team. That's good as he was. And yet. You're looking to push him out of there because of personality and, conflict? And, and look, we're not talking weird. about a uh, first-year coach like David Blatt, and he's not getting respect from a guy like LeBron. We're talking about George Carl, who comes with his own resume. He comes with results. And if he's not getting along with DeMarcus Cousins already, it's just not going to work out. Yep. The thing is, he example. also comes with baggage. Mm -hmm. That's the thing with George, with George? Carl. He yeah. comes with baggage. But At least have baggage. This is very true. Yeah. But he also comes with a resume with more credentials, which just kind of illuminates what you were saying, maybe not deferring so much because he knows what he brings to the table. <laughs> Adapt or perish. Yeah. Seriously, All I mean, right. it's a cliche, but it's true. If you're George Carl, if you're not going to adapt, then your team is going to perish. If you're DeMarcus Cousins, if you get traded, you're going to have to learn to adapt to it at a certain point. I think DeMarcus, to your point, looks at, I was here before you got here. They brought you in to help me, right. not the other way around. So why are you trying to make a better effort to try to make this work? DeMarcus is the guy who's young enough that you can still mold. George Carl, you look at him and you go, that's an old guy who's stuck in his ways. He's the one, I eat at 4.30 every day, and you ain't going to tell me we're eating at 5. <laughs> well, obviously, George and DeMarcus not getting along. These two guys don't have that problem. Jordan Spieth and uh, Rory McIlroy have both said they are the best in the world, but only one can be the top dog. We'll talk about a potential rivalry brewing. That is next. Well, according to the Sydney Morning Herald, the life of Matthew Della Vadova is being turned into a Hollywood movie. It will be a fictional story based on his rise and will follow the three young Australian basketball players drafted to play basketball for a U.S. college. And I have to know, what is your reaction? I thought we were done with Delhi, but he is now on the big screen, at least coming to a theater near you. A better movie for me would be you, Albany's Peter Hooley. I mean, you lose your mother to cancer during the season. You come back, hit the game-winning shot to put your team in the NCAA tournament. Nothing is Della Vadova, but that story ended the fourth quarter of game four with when Steph he went back into the phone booth and yeah, he wasn't in Steph Curry's head. I wasn't buying that. <laughs> yeah. So I'm sure it's a, uh, people love underdog stories. The Peter Hooley underdog story, that would be a better one than Matthew Michael, Della what I want to know is will you use your hard-earned money to go see a movie with Deli in it? Or about Deli, I should say. <laughs> I ain't even watching the trailer <laughs> for that movie. Okay. Which is why they got it's a fictional story. You know right, why? Because right. the real version doesn't have a happy ending. Uh. <laughs> <laughs>
What's going to happen to Deli oh, in the real What are they going to do in the real movie? Like 30 minutes in, he could be cramping up. Oh, <laughs> Deli, I appreciate your hustle. We're going to at least get that out on the Don't debate. Don't punk up now. Because I know. Of we upset. appreciate his hustle. We just, you know, uh, yeah. not make what, it all Does he have bad. to have a cup of coffee before he does his movie, too? Oh, <laughs> wait. Does, does, does the movie have a title? Because I know what Taj Gibson, Al Horford, and Draymond Green would call it. Oh, I no. still hate Matthew Della Vadova. Yes, they mm -hmm. do. Who, yes, who's going to play him? Jerry Farrar, a, a turtle from Entourage? Would he would be a good one? Turtle's my boy, though. He, yeah. he might actually play him pretty good. But he, he the title yeah, of the movie could be Diving on You. So what do you think will be the total earnings for this movie? About twelve. How much did the much people? Much more than the people movie. <laughs> no, not that much more. Yeah, it'd be much not more. That much more. was a better story than whatever. I, I, He's got to give his mom free tickets. Yeah, over, she'd be the only the one. The overachieving paying. underdog, far better than corruption and fever. I would go see better. Jurassic World a third time before I see that. Well, guess yeah. what? You know who's earning a lot of money? Jameis Winston. Uh, he was asked in an interview with NFL.com who he most looks forward to being matched up against. And he said, the player I'm most looking forward to play against, what's this, has to be probably J.J. Watt. Is this smart? You've been in the league point five seconds, home. Is yeah, this smart to say? Why not? I like Jameis's swagger. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? This is part of the reason why I'm going to watch Jameis this season. I just want to see how he's going to do against guys like this. He's a big guy, too. You know what I mean? I want to see J.J. Watt go up against him, try to bring down Jameis Winston, and see if Jameis can get out of that. I, I think it's going to be signed. I hope Jameis doesn't end up being a disaster this year. That's one thing I, I don't want to no. see. The beauty for Jameis Winston is if you're going to put billboard material up there, put it up in June. <laughs> you know, that's the beauty. That's it. You want to know how smart Jameis Winston is? He's going to call somebody out in June because by the time they play, and they're already three games into the season, mm -hmm. J.J. Watt's going to be like, y'all, did, did he say something back in the, I don't remember Brady, if he you said think J.J. Watt would be forgetting this already? Oh, hell no. He's not forgetting that. I mean, J.J. Watt, for my money, is the best player pound for pound in the National Football League. I'll, I'll, I'll take him what he does week in and week out. I know it's a quarterback-driven driven league. Give me that guy, and I'll take my chances. He's motivated just to practice. <laughs> not just games. He's motivated to practice. So something oh, like this will catch his antenna. He's not going to forget about it. But, you know, if you're Jameis Winston, if you want to be the best, why not say, hey, if I'm going to be at that level, that's a guy that my team has to take down. It's not just about quarterback versus quarterback. It's about, man, I know J.J. Watt's coming for me. Well, go ahead and bring it. I'm not backing down. I'm not going to shrink from any kind of pressure you're going to put on me. So I'm not bothered by that. But I'll say this. If you're going to if you're gonna fat mouth, can't be a slouch in the ring. So if you're Jameis Winston, you put that out there and you fat mouth about it, go out there and deliver. Because if you don't, it's going to be a lot worse for you than if anybody else And here's that. the thing. He's not just saying this arbitrary. Trilly. The Bucks actually faced the Texans in Houston week three. But, you know, J.J. Watt is also known for the pass deflection and getting his yep. hand up in the passing mm. lane. So hey, he's going to run it 50 yards for a touchdown. Absolutely. So when the two of them face, how many sacks do you feel like J.J. Watt might get? Ooh, I think J.J. Watt will get two sacks, and, and he could get a pick six. And he'll probably score a touchdown catching his tight end, too. And I wanted to do the dance of the commercial. It takes two to make the I wanted to do that. <laughs> I want to see that from the commercial. Right, yeah. And Caroline Wozniacki, they're dating. Oh, Who was out there? She may and be, you know, there. She may be doing the dance, too. Tell you, I will say this about Jane. If you're going to call somebody out, you'd call out the best. Yeah. You know what? Don't if call he knocks out, down a couple passes scrubs. and runs back a pick six and Jameis still gets the win, they need something to talk about in Tampa. Yeah, absolutely. They absolutely need something to absolutely. talk about. Absolutely. Yeah, because remember that image of uh, Jameis Winston playing when he's uh, still in college with him slipping back yeah. like on what? a banana oh. peel and so JJ Watts You know when like that first that. sack comes, he's gonna be like, Hey, you can I get some crab legs? <laughs> oh, 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 well, oh, you know what? Yeah, I went there. Yeah, I went there, oh, so stop. I went there. Oh, we we can't even leave the crab legs in the past. Now, um, this is your last day on the desk. So how do you enjoy yourself talking to kettlebell guy oh. over here and <laughs> Pub Daddy's best? Hey, boy over here. When, when else on first thing have they ever talked about uh, new kids on the block, Puff Daddy, and we can have some base. And our base, exactly. So you know what is our final ending uh, theme song here? What is it going no to be? No kettlebells? No problem. <laughs> so I can't even pick up this. But see, I need to. Everybody wave and say goodbye. We appreciate you joining us. Come back tomorrow at 10.